G'day fellow cartographers, it's Joe Swinney here from Story River Games, and I know that you're just itching to start your, your map. Um, so let's get straight to it. Now, in the previous tutorial, I asked you to do a little bit of homework, which is to go and look at geography and think about how your map is going to form. And I hope you've done that, because it will help you when you actually come to do this work. But let's get straight into this now and create our overland map. To do this, you click on new map button here. No surprises there. Select overland maps, pick default uh, predefined template, and then press enter. Now, campaign cartographer will show all of the templates that you've got. Um, I have a lot more than, than many of you because I subscribe to the Pro Fantasy Annual, which gives me heaps of stuff. I also make my own wizards from time to time. But what we're looking for here is this one, the Campaign Cutoff for 3 standard 1000 by 800 mile map. And the reason I'm suggesting that we start with that one is it's the default. <laughs> Everyone's got this template and uh, it will also give you a great deal of functionality. It's a great way to, to start. Um, if you want to start trying out different maps, then certainly look at the, uh, the vector black and white ones and so forth. But let's start with this one, clicking on it. So, so we start off with a map like so. Um, the first thing I normally do is give it a name and save it to a location. So I'm going to go File, Save As. I'm going to uh, come up here and I believe that I have a project for Overland Maps in here somewhere. Overland Maps, there it is. I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to call it um, Islands of the Dread Pirate King, because I love pirates. <laughs> Who doesn't love pirates? Um, so uh, that's basically set up our work area now. The first thing that we want to do is start adding our land, the physical island shape to this map area. And to do that, uh, you use this tool here, default land mass. When you click on this, um, you then get a chance to start basically drawing onto the canvas. So I'm just left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking. Now, I don't know if you notice, as I'm drawing, notice how that line is sort of going slightly random. Now, that is because what's actually happening here is Campaign Cartographer is drawing what it calls is a, a, multi, is a fractal multipoly. Uh, basically, it's a fractal line uh, that then creates a closed polygon shape. It has also automatically put a lovely green um, uh, grass like land mass sort of effect and it's even drawn a little line around that to give us a bit of a beach front, a bit of a, a blending into the water. So that's great. I mean that's that saved you a lot of work. To do this manually by not using one of these automated tools you would use this function over here which is the fractal poly tool. Um, then you'd have to manually fill it and select all the the details and the layers and so forth. No, always try and use this tool. It's going to be a lot faster. Now I'm going to add a few little islands around this just to show you that you can have a little bit of fun. Um, but note how I'm drawing them in a logical line. Oops, I'm just going to undo that one. Oops, there we go. Because like Hawaii, this landmass was formed by a volcano range. In fact, we're going to make some of the volcanoes still active. Now, here's another really good function, auto trimming in Campaign Cartographer. If you start outside the map and then you draw in, you can actually have Campaign Cartographer automatically trim your land masses for you. Now let's put a few other little islands around the edges there. That looks like a little peak coming off. Maybe just a small island off there. There we go. And a little island off here as well. Excellent. So now we have our initial land mass. And that is obviously where the volcanic stress lines lie. So fantastic. Now, one of the things that I do want in this particular world setting, this is where you start getting the world building, is I wanted uh, an area of my map um, that was going to be quite difficult to navigate. I wanted a couple of islands that sort of cramped in the ships, and that's where our, our pirate kingdom is going to be. So what I'm going to do is, even though it might not make perfect, perfect, perfect sense from a geological foundation format, if I put a few little additional islands in like this, 
and don't overdo it, I can get a feel there. So that gives me my storyline plot line, which I'd like in here. And it's not it's not really breaking the over the overarching uh, reality of the map. So that's got our land masses down. Okay, now we've got our landmass on, we can start thinking about what's under the water a little bit. One of the ways of making your, your land masses pop is to show the shallow water, um, the coals and so forth, that are leading up to them. This is also a great chance for you to think about what sort of adventures would take place in and around that coastline. To create a shallow water or a texture in the ocean with Campaign Cartographer, you click on this tool panel over here, which is your um, contours tools. Now, clicking on it will bring up this, and I'm going to select a default C4, which will give me a much lighter ocean look. So I'll just click on, oops, I chose the wrong one there. I'm very sorry. I'll right click on that again, click on four. And now I'm just going to start drawing around it. Now, with the land, if you noticed before, it gave us this jagged sort of jiggly line, what we call a fractal line. But it's not doing it for this one. And the reason for that is it is creating what's called a smooth poly uh, path around it. And just like the other tool, it will automatically trim off the edge of the map, which is super, super useful. And I'm just gonna go around here like this, create a nice shallow area. And done. So there's our, there's our area. Well, you might be asking, hey, what's happened to the what's happened to the land? Well, don't worry. If you just click on this button here, refresh, you'll now see that your land sits atop a light colored water. OK, now that you've got your land and your ocean down, it's time to start planning out where we're going to put our mountains. To do this, we're going to to use a couple of interesting little tools. Let me just show you. First of all, think about where does that mountain range run, uh, run from? And for me, it's going to be running up along here with a spike coming into here. And um, I, I actually wanna have some fairly heavy cliffs. So clearly over here, there's been some pretty heavy duty um, mountain and geological action as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to, rather than putting down the symbols for mountains first, we're going to map out where they are by using what we call default terrain settings. So if you click on this button here, um, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of default terrains. I'm going to go for mountain dark. And this gives me a drawing tool that when I draw it, will have all of those beautiful color settings that I want already set. In fact, I don't like that one. I want that one to be much longer. So again, Okay, we'll run that right down the middle of the island. Right, now, remember I said that I wanted some mountains uh, that were quite close to the edge of the ocean so I could have these big cliffs? Well, let's put those in. Now, to do that, I'm going to uh, need a very special command called the trace command. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to show you rather than try and explain it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in to where I wanna put my mountain ranges there. Uh, the zoom function lets you get in nice and close to the detail. There's our jaggly coastline there. I'm going to select the uh, default terrain as I normally would. So I'm gonna start my mountain range and draw along till I get to near the coast here. Now, the problem is if I'm going to try and draw this map along the coastline, I'm gonna to have to match it perfectly to that line. That's almost impossible to do manually. It's not impossible, it's really hard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look along the bottom here and you'll see, look, the next point instructions give you a whole bunch of options, including T for trace. And if I push T for trace, I can now click on the entity that I wanna trace, which is my land. And you can see now my next point is going to be somewhere on that coastline. So I'm going to click there. Then I'm going to move my mouse along. And as you can see, it's tracing along the, along the coastline for me. That's absolutely brilliant. And then I can come in from the map and bring it like so. Um, I could do the exact same thing here, which I'm going to do for this island. So I'm going to start, hit T, select my little island area, 
and then move along the island to there. Like so. And we'll also do the same here again. Click to start your, your um, mountain range. Come to the, push T to come to the coastline. Mark where you want to start on the coastline. And let's bring that one in through a strange valley in here because what I want is that to be an old lava pit. Wahahaha. Brilliant. And now you can see that campaign cartographer has also got built in filters. We call them um, uh, sheets and layers. This is sheets uh, that has faded mountains just near. So they look quite natural. We're getting close. Let's continue by putting in the last of the mountain ranges in through here. Going to be a little bit more lax with how I put them in. There we go. And I might put a little mountain range in there. And I'm going to put a bit of a mountain range in here as well. Nice big mountain range in there. There we go. And of course, a good size mountain range in there. Excellent. So now what you've got is a good understanding on where our mountains are going to flow. Okay, so what I now want you to do is um, fire up Campaign Cartographer, draw in your lands, draw in your, your beautiful oceans, and then put your mountain range outlines into your map. And uh, try that tracing tool. If you think that your mountains are going to give you nice cliff areas, use that to really give some great um, definition into your map and to keep things nice and accurate. So get your, get your landmass on first, get your ocean lines in, and then put the areas for your mountains down. In our next video, we're going to start adding the actual mountain symbols using a very special technique that I call the top-down technique. See you shortly.